Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and damn, do we have some big news this week. Obviously I'm talking about the Wonder Woman news, but that will be toward the end of the podcast. First, let's start out with the numbers from the weekend. Opening in first place is Freaky, a Bloomhouse horror movie from Universal, which made $3.7 million. In second place is Let Em Go, dropping 55% from its first place opening to make $1.8 million for a total of $6.9 million. In third place is War with Grandpa, which is still holding on with $1.3 million for a total of $15.2 million. In fourth place is Come Play with $1.1 million for a total now of $7.3 million. In fifth place is Honest Thief with 800000 for a total of $12.4 million. Tenant is now, after almost three months, out of the top five and ended up in sixth place with 735000 for a total now of $56.3 million. So this is not too surprising of a result for Freaky. As I mentioned in the past few weeks, unless you're a big budget movie, you're not getting past the $5 million range for an opening weekend. Besides a low budget movie, uh, like Freaky would have probably done around $15 million for an opening weekend under normal conditions. But what is important to note here is that it only premiered in 2,472 theaters. As more and more places across the country shut down for at least a few weeks to get a hold on the virus, plus Regal just giving up for now across the country, Expect this theater count to possibly go down even more over the next few weeks, which means less money to be made for movies. Looking at the international numbers, Demon Slayer does look like it could hit $250 million now, as in Japan it has now made $223.6 million. Deadline is reporting that Toho, the studio behind the film, offered free giveaways to get uh, people back in for repeat viewings, and it looks like it helped. Now that it has made this much, it is now the fifth highest movie in Japan of all time. For China, the sacrifice was in first place again with 9.2 million and has now passed 150 million in total. In second place is a bit of a shock, but Paw Patrol Mighty Pups with 5.5 million. Hellboy ended up in third place with 4.6 million, though to be fair, it opened on the previous Monday and has made 10.4 million in total. The Hong Kong movie Find Your Voice made 3.5 million for a fourth place finish, and to round out the top five was My People, My Homeland, which came in in fifth place with 3.1 million for a total now of $422 million. The Call of the Wild, which did open over the weekend, bombed, making only $1.4 million. So looking at these numbers, it does look like the Chinese box office is slowing down and it is it needs a shot in the arm, which it will get soon, next month with its holiday movies. During normal times, Hollywood movies would be filmed this time period uh, between the release of a bunch of Chinese movies, but obviously that is not happening this year. For Hollywood movies that did release, it looks like for Lionsgate, it was a bit of a smart move to actually release Hellboy as it looks like it will help reduce their losses that they got from the movie. Uh, meanwhile, Disney did not see that at all with their Fox movie. Now back to Hollywood where another deal has been struck. Universal was finally able to strike a deal with Cinemark on a shortened exclusive window for their movies and unlike the AMC deal, provided more details on how it works. So going forward, Universal will have the option to put a movie on PVOD if it meets certain requirements. If a movie opens under $50 million, the studio will have the option to put that movie on PVOD after 17 days. However, if a movie opens above that, they'll have to wait 31 days before being allowed to do so. Also, if they choose to exercise this option, it can still stay in theaters if Cinemark wants it. Just because it goes on PVOD does not mean it gets pulled. Also, like AMC, for any PVOD sale, Cinemark will get a cut of the profit. Now, Deadline sources were able to provide more details about this, uh, saying of the 10% cut, AMC and Cinemark get around 15-17% of it. This is smart for Universal because it gives them room within the 10% to add smaller theaters and the one big one left, Regal, without moving out of that 10%. While I was not the biggest fan of the AMC deal, I think this deal is a bit better and more fair for both parties. First, let's look at the recovery heading into 2021. Yes, the world will go back to normal next year, but it'll be a gradual process, especially in the United States. You could have one area in a few months back to normal 80-90%, but in another area it's still in partial lockdown. With this deal, Universal can release a movie nationwide, and if it goes under $50 million, release it on PVOD, and Cinemark can keep showing it. This means for the places where things are back to normal, people can watch it in theaters if they want, and if for places in lockdown, they can still rent it on PVOD. In this situation, for the next few months, both of them win. When things do get back to normal, Cinemark has the peace of mind that their big blockbusters will stay in theaters exclusively for at least a month. Remember, after 31 days, Universal gets the option they might not want to, if Fast 9, for example, is on its way to 250, 300 million domestic. Why, why stop that? Why cut that short? 
let it get there and as soon as it starts to dry up, release it on PVOD. So where does Hollywood go from here? Well, Regal will have a tough time saying no to a deal like this in the future, especially if other studios make the same offers to AMC and Cinemark. I can see Disney and Warner Brothers, for example, offering, let's say, a 45-day window, and then use the, those movies will be released on their streaming services. Again, in that situation, everyone wins as the theaters still get the big movies for a period of time, can advertise that they got their big movies on their service sooner rather than later. If I had to take a guess on who makes the next offer, it's Disney. From the jump, Disney has been reorganizing around Disney+, Plus and has had success doing so. To finish the conversion, they need to work on new deals with theater chains, so there is a direct pipeline from theatrical release to Disney+, Plus, then to PVOD and physical media. I would say Warner Brothers, uh, but they're still restructuring and things are kind of a mess over there. Now, a lot like last week, there are some more movies in development, and we start with Disney. They are working on a new live-action remake, with this one being a remake of Leon Stitch. This has been talked about before, but now seems to be moving forward with John and Chu working on a deal to direct the movie. Besides that, though, details are still very scarce, with them still looking for a scriptwriter, and it's not even known for sure if this will be a theatrical release or going, sh going straight to Disney+. Plus. As far as the live-action remake goes, this could be really good or really bad, depending on the live-action design of Stitch and the rest of the aliens. But if I had to guess, I feel this one would go to Disney+, Plus, or who knows? It could be a movie with a limited theatrical window, and then go to the service if Disney makes a deal with theaters. Another remake, or I guess reboot is the proper term here, is from Universal with a reboot of The Scorpion King. This was announced by the studio, and not only that, Dwayne Johnson will be coming back to produce it, along with his studio Seven Bucks production. Since this is a reboot, and the fact that his schedule is super, super busy, The Rock will not be playing the title role, and the studio will be looking for a new actor for that, as well as a director. As for who will be writing the script, well, it will be Jonathan Herman, who wrote the script for Straight Outta Compton, and has done a rewrite for F9. Honestly, I'm happy about this move, uh, in that it can hopefully bring back some respect to the Scorpion King franchise. If you have not been aware, they're still making them over the past few years, but they are straight to DVD movies. Now, I'm not saying this will be a guaranteed hit. The last version of The Mummy would like a word with you on that, but at least there is a chance to reboot this franchise proper, and if it works, Universal has another franchise they can work with, and it makes sense. Since the monster universe failed, it seems working with Blumhouse on smaller standalone movies work. The Scorpion King can be the big summer blockbuster with horror elements. And well, since they still need to hire a lot of people, though, this is easily a 2023 movie, if not further down the road. And the last studio making a move is Paramount, who may have found a director for their next Transformer movie. Right now, Deadline is reporting that they are looking at Steven Cop Jr. to direct it. You would know him as the director for Creed 2. As for which Transformer movie this would be, uh, we're still not sure yet. Paramount so far this year has only said that there are two movies they are working on. One of them is assumed to be Bumblebee, Bumblebee 2, but the other one is not clear. It could very likely be a continuation of the Bay movies without them, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we do have VOD Premium this week, and guess what? AT&T and Warner Media were able to strike a deal. That's right, they have finally struck a deal with Amazon to get HBO Max on the streaming platform. Right now, it seems the company did get what they want. The HBO app on the Fire TV platform and tablets will be upgraded to HBO Max. All the people who subscribe to a uh, HBO via Amazon can access it with their account, and people can also just sign up directly in the app if they do not have it. It also looks like they'll be able to remove the HBO channel from Amazon's lineup as well. This was reported to be a sticking point before, as Amazon wanted HBO Max as an Amazon channel, since they'd be able to get more data out of it. With all of this done, Warner Media now has 5 million HBO subscribers on Amazon to convert to HBO Max users. So far, there's no word on when the service would be available on Roku, the last holdout, domestically. I don't have much to say here since this needed to be done, so it's about damn time. I really am curious what the exact details between Roku and at and that are causing such an issue, since they are the biggest platform. Now, finally, let's get to the biggest story and what might be the biggest story in a while. Those crazy sons of bitches did it over AT&T and Warner Media, and Wonder Woman 1984 will be going to HBO Max. Kinda. So before we go over the thoughts and what this means, let's break down what is actually happening. So Wonder Woman will premiere in some countries internationally on December 16th in theaters. On Christmas Day, it will premiere in more countries internationally in theaters, as well as any theater that is open in America. Along with this, on the same day, the movie will be available to stream on HBO Max at no additional cost. The catch here is that it is for a limited time. Deadline is reporting that it will stay on the service for 30 days. So toward the end of January, the movie will be pulled from the service, and then from day 31 to 60, it will go back to an exclusive theater window, theatrical window, 
and then go to PVOD and continue on a normal movie life cycle. Right now, it is not clear how the studio got theaters to be okay with this and what did they offer to make peace. So far, AMC has come out in support of it and smaller independent theaters have come out in support of it. It's kind of surprised me, but okay. So with details out of the way, I gotta say I have mixed feelings on this. On one hand, that's a smart play to boost HBO Max. The service is seriously lacking a headliner to get people to sign up. Now, for at least one month, they have it. Also, with the no extra cost required, this should get a lot of people to sign up right before or on Christmas to watch it. I, again, not like Mulan where they have to pay an extra fee. They can just sign up, $15, take it to go. On the other hand, they are giving up, under normal conditions, a near lock billion dollar movie. For the first one, yes, Wonder Woman did really good. Over $800 million, in fact. But around half of that was domestic. It did really, really well that summer in America. Now, with the lack of new movies around the world, wherever it actually premieres, it could do really well and make up some ground. Looking at the countries it could premiere in right now, is a lot of countries in Asia. Europe could start to reopen by Christmas, but it's not a guarantee. If I had to guess right now, if it does as good, if not better, than the first one in China, and does well in Japan, as well as some other smaller countries, the studio's looking at three to 400 million internationally. Domestically? I can't in good conscience make a prediction since, one, we don't even know how many theaters are going to be open by Christmas. If anyone will want to risk it. And if they play it. I do feel overall this was an AT&T decision. From their point of view, HBO Max is supposed to be their moneymaker. And right now it's not. To make matters worse, they look over and see Disney raking millions and millions more subscribers every quarter. So to give the platform a shot in the arm, they made the right choice. But I do think there will be a lot of consequences from this move. Good and bad. Theaters might refuse Warner Brothers movies until they offer a universal type deal down the road. People might come to expect a potential Wonder Woman 3 to come to the service as well. And this may allow other studios cover to release some of their bigger movies in waiting to go to streaming. But look, at least December will be very interesting box office wise. We'll have the Chinese movies for the holidays. And now we have Wonder Woman wherever it premieres. What do those numbers mean? So we'll be looking forward to that, breaking that down. And that'll be it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. I think the obvious question for the week is, do you think AT&T and Warner Media made the right move here, or should they have just punted it again next year? Let me know on Facebook, link to the page in the show notes. Thank you for listening. See you next time.